watching a mom work teaches values in a way that you can't just spit out at them. (laughs) Welcome to Decorate Like a Design Boss, a podcast for design lovers who want to create beautiful spaces in their very own homes. My name is Kimberly Grigg, and I'm a professional interior designer who teaches design lovers like yourselves how to decorate. And when I say decorate, I mean decorate like a design boss. If you're ready to create a space that your family loves and your neighbors can't stop raving about, well, buckle up, honey, because it's time to design. Well, hello, design lovers and design enthusiasts. I have news. I am so excited to tell you that this is episode 52, which means this podcast is officially one year old. Hard for me to believe. And I have you, my dear listeners, to thank. This podcast, I'm told, is performing really well. And well, I'm sort of proud of it. This was kind of just a labor of love and no epidural. And to be fair, podcasts are not the easiest things to do. But for some reason, I really kind of love this medium and I'm deep down in it now. So thank you for tuning in each week. And I appreciate all the great reviews. And it always makes me feel good when you share this with someone who you think will benefit. So now I ask, please leave me a comment, a review, or even an email and let me know what you might like to hear about in the upcoming year. Any topic that you would like to explore about design or design products or even other designers you'd like to hear from, I'd love to know so I can be bringing you what might what you might like to hear. And now, let's dive into episode 52 and I have something really special. Today I'm talking to Corey Wright and well, I'm excited to learn about this gal and about a couple of inventions that she has created that are perfect for the home. And well, without further ado, let's just introduce Corey right now. Welcome, Corey. Thank you. Thank you so much. And congratulations on your one year success. Very wow. exciting. <laughs> Hard to believe. Hard to believe. So tell me, since we're talking about years, How long have these products been on the market before we even get into the products? We actually just launched them. So we got the Blade Butler, which is a ceiling fan, blade cleaner. We started reselling that in November and we actually received product in December. And then um, Alimicent, the fragrance holder, we actually didn't get that until end January, February. So we're just starting to launch these products and getting them out. And wow. Well, congratulations. And I hope that my listeners will take advantage. I can't wait because first of all, I guess let's just back up and share with the audience. What are these products? So the Blade Butler is a ceiling fan blade cleaner. It's on a pole that's 69 inches long and it has a removable washable bag. So when the mouth per se of the of the blade butler opens, it closes down on the blade. And then as you pull that bag towards you, it seals and grabs all of the dust and debris into the bag. So it doesn't fall on your you know, bed, floor, face, all of those things, keeps the allergens contained. And then you just machine wash it when you're done. It's super quick, super easy. So that's the blade butler. Wow. That is so incredible. Wow. Like, What a great idea for like a need. So to me, I love it when function and form come together. But let's face it, we all live in our homes. And even though we don't want dust to be flying, it does. does. And, you know, you look up at that, that ceiling fan and you're like, oh, my God. And and then you don't want to clean it because then the dust flies all over the sofa and everywhere else. And it's like, whoa, crazy. And I just got to tell you, I hope you're marketing this to restaurants, too, because there is nothing more of a bigger turnoff than when I look around in restaurants 
and I see dust everywhere. And I know they're all focused on the kitchen and what the food tastes like and all that stuff. And they forget these little areas like blinds or a ceiling fan and like, ew, gross. (laughs) Super gross. Well, my biggest thing is, um, you know, living in Arizona, we have fans all over our houses. I, in, in my old house, I had them in my kitchen and I would clean the entire kitchen. And then I would look up and I would have forgotten to clean the fans. And it literally was a whole nother process of cleaning them again. Or, you know, you could, you change the sheets on your bed and you look up and go, ugh, you know, so it just really eases the process and you just don't have a mess when you're done. So, so and, and this sounds like it's really easy to use. Super easy. Yep. Super easy. It just has just a sliding mechanism that opens the mouth. You you clamp it on, close it down and pull it off. It's super fast, super easy. My dad loves it, keeps people off ladders. So, you know, it really just eases the process. Wow. So Corey, how did you think of this? (laughs) Well, you know what? I actually, like I said, a few years back had a house that had the ceiling fans in the kitchen and I had cleaned my entire kitchen and I just thought, there's got to be a better way. You know, I would put sheets down, I would get all the cleaning supplies out, the ladder. And so I went on this mad hunt to find what I was envisioning and it just didn't exist. So I went to Walmart and I got trash bag picker uppers and vacuum bags and I zip tied them together. And I was like, this is what, what we need to do to have on the markets. It just traps it, makes it fast and easy, and it just didn't exist. So from that point forward, it, it kind of sat on the on the shelf table for a few years. And then um, as my life, you know, progressed in another direction, I was able to focus on it and work on it and, and get it to market along with my business partner, Karen Spencer. So we're super excited. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So like, Did you, like as a kid, think that you'd ever invent a product? No, no, (laughs) I didn't. I didn't. But through the years, you know, I thought of things and then later seen them in magazines or, you know, things like that. And I thought, oh, that did exist. But now, you know, with the internet being so spiffy and, and being able to just look things up so quickly, if I have something that comes to mind, I'm, I'm able to kind of, you know, move forward on it, which is what kind of brings us to a limousine. That was, yeah. Tell me about a limousine. So, um, I was getting ready to sell my house and my boss had told me go to the store and get this particular scent of a fragrance plugin. And I literally have bags, Ziploc bags full of these you know, the plug-in <laughs> holders, fragrance holders. Me too. Every, Me too. Know, every uh, flavor. <laughs> every one, multiple for yes. all over the house. Air, air, what, Glade and Airwick and yep. there's the, um, oh, what's the one, the fabric where you spray the fabric? They Febreze. Have the, yeah, Febreze. Yep. I'll um, have one. Yeah, Airwick, Bath and Body, and none of them are universal. So I went and I bought a bazillion of these, the fragrances, knowing that I had the holders. And I came back and I had like one. And so, <laughs> you know, it's so frustrating. So, of course, I went straight to the internet and looked for a universal holder because I was so just annoyed with it. And again, it didn't exist. So I um, went to my patent attorney that I had used for the Blade Butler and said, can you do a quick search and see if there's anything like this on the market? And he came back and said, nope, feel free. So we um, moved forward and designed a universal fragrance holder. So you can just buy whatever you want now. <laughs> as long as you have a little I so love this. Like, thank you. I was literally in, I have a condo that is my personal condo that we kind of use as a guest house. And I have a bunch of kids and, and so my house has a lot of bedrooms, but I never know which kid's going to be there or not be there. They're all grown now, but still they, they, they do boomerang back. And Mm -hmm. so I keep this little condo and I was renovating it and I have guests coming this weekend. And I, I was at Walmart and I picked up Airglade thinking I know, or Airwick, I know that I have like Airwick stuff. So I'll just get the fragrance for Airwick. Well, guess what? I couldn't find an air wick. And then now I've got the fragrance and I've got no holder. Same story, different day. And like, 
when I started reading about your product and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can buy any fragrance. Plus there's certain fragrances within the different brands that I like more than others. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be able to just kind of not worry about what my holder is. And this solves that problem. It is ingenious. I yeah, love thank you. I love Thank it. you. Yeah, thank you so much. It really just, you know, one little stress we can take out of our life. <laughs> it it easier. Had, I, I had a builder tell me one time, what did he call it? It was something like little bitty aggravators. And, you know, and it's exactly. the truth. It's like, they're just little bitty things that, that aggravate you and you don't even realize why until yep. you're standing in that situation or until someone like you comes along and solves the problem for us. Thank so, you. Which <laughs> both of these products are amazing. Amazing. I, I, I can't say enough great things about them. So tell, tell the listener, like how much does something like e each of these products, how much does it cost? Um, to buy them currently, the Blake Butler is $69.95 and a Limicents are $9.95. Wow. Each. What a, that's mm -hmm. a bargain. That is such yeah. a bargain. And when you think about how many uses you're going to get out of the $9.95 gadget, like, whoa. And when you think about what this is going to save you, your your blade butler is going to save you in time. I, I like you. How many times have I made the bed and everything spick and span and clean? And then I look at that ceiling fan and I'm like, no, not today, because I don't want to mess up my good work of everything else that's clean. But now I have a I have an option. And I think yeah. that, that is so important. So I have to know because I have that curious brain. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you get a product from conception to market? Like that must entail a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of asking a ton of questions. That's really what kind of got us through. Obviously, the Billy Butler is what we did first. And so I worked with the patent attorney. Um, I had a friend who had another product he happened to be taking kind of to market, but had was further along than me. So he directed me to an engineer. And then I asked questions with him, he directed me to another engineer. So some of it was a little bit of trial and error. You know, we, we went to people that maybe didn't work with our sort of product, but we're super kind. I think when you're in that sort of industry, you have, you know, knowledge of other people, you have a network base, you have people that I think this person might, might work good for you. So, mm -hmm. um, I, we, we were so fortunate. We worked with a lot of great people that were eager to help, um, wanted to help and just kind of steered us in the right direction. The Blade Butler did take years to bring to market. We ended up landing with a company called IDP. They're out of Irvine. They've helped us with the manufacturing. They have the connections. The products are made in China for the manufacturing, the shipping, and have really helped us along there. We worked with numerous companies along the way, pipelines in Phoenix, but it's just questions. It's just once I kind of got the ball rolling, mm -hmm. I asked a lot of questions. And like I said, people were just so eager to help. I wouldn't be here to Today, if I wasn't fortunate enough to, to just work with really great, kind, willing That's people. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, yeah, there's knowledge out there for the curious mind. There is, there is. And, the, you know, I did a ton of research. Karen and I both did. We're constantly on the internet, seeking out resources, just information. You know, how do you move from A to B? And then once Blade Butler, was going. Alimicent, I started probably about two and a half years ago. So it was really quick to bring to market. But having done it once, we kind of had a great pipeline of people and resources and were able to get it here rather quickly. So um, like I've told everybody that's ever asked me that, if, if you know of anybody that's trying to bring something to market or has an idea, I'm all about helping anything I can do to have anyone else, you know, bring their, their idea to fruition. It's, it's amazing. Sure. Which I think is the power now of social media, the internet, like, you know, if you can keep it in perspective and again, I have six kids and of course, you know, their phones are attached to like their, their fingers mm -hmm. and, they will even occasionally say things like, you know, kind of slam the, the use of the phone. And I 
was very like not at the table. And once we're home, we're like a family, all those things. But if you use the internet and social media wisely, it can be your best friend in terms of gaining knowledge. Uh And, you know, again, you have to have a curious brain to make that happen. But if you do, then you can about teach yourself anything. And since I teach interior design, you know, I really studied that because I thought, is it possible? And yes, it is. Just like you're saying, it's possible to learn how to do these things. And one connection will need lead to the next connection, typically. Uh Uh And which I think is so fabulous. So how is the supply chain for you? Like getting a product now, considering all this, like in my industry, the supply chain is so clogged, it's a nightmare. But have you have you had issues with that? Our biggest issue really was getting them here. The cost of production went up. Obviously, there were, you know, shortages with all sorts of materials. So the cost to make them went up, which was tough, you know, because we really had this budget of what we thought they were going to cost. And then ended up being, you know, quite a bit more. And then we got them shipped here and then they sat in Long Beach. So it was like, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming with really no idea of when they were going to get unloaded. And then, <laughs> you know, and then just the, the cost to ship them here was you know, three, four times what we had initially been quoted. So that was our biggest obstacle or is just trying to keep the price down, keep it reasonable for the consumer, but really the cost, just the cost of getting it here and manufacturing it. So we didn't run into any shortages of actually building the product, maybe a little bit of delays, but it really is just the cost. So that's, that's our, our biggest obstacle now, but I think that's everything. Do you have a business background? I mean, this is a business. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. So, well, in my former life, as I call it, my ex-husband and I did have a business. I did the books and things like that. Sales, you know, hit the hit the ground running and and tried to get that that going. And and it did. You know, we we did have a good business with that. Afterwards, I well. I, even when I was was married, I got my real estate license. So I sold real estate for many years and then again, worked it full time. So yeah, I mean, I think I've always had that in me to to want to push forward, you know, work hard. And, and, you know, my biggest thing, one of them is I, my kids have known about this and they've seen it. And so it's so inspirational for me, for them to see that you really can't accomplish it. You just keep yeah. moving forward and work hard. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great thing. It's been a really great process, I think, for all of us. Sure. And so how many kids do you have? I have four kids. Whoa. What are the ages? Yeah. Well, you, you win. You win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it's not for everybody to have this size family, but it works for me. Busy brain. But yeah. uh, what are the ages, Corey? So my oldest is a senior in high school. And then I have twins that are in eighth grade. And then my son is in third. So, wow. yeah. Wow. You run the gamut. Is anybody showing interest in the business? Um, You know what? I think they all like it. It's funny. My oldest, she goes away to college next year and, and she wants to be in kind of the green earth part of, you know, that, that sort of movement, which I think is exciting. And so she always says, I'm going to invent something. I'm going to invent something for our future and, and how we can keep, you know, the planet more clean. And I'm just like, keep thinking, keep thinking, you know, so I love it. Sounds like that doesn't fall far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's exciting to watch, you know, I hope that she does. She gets her brain going and, and kind of goes off, you know, how I used to. And, and uh, so, yeah, so it's exciting. But with everything else, I mean, they've helped unload boxes and print labels and do all kinds of stuff. So it's definitely a family affair for well, sure. And, and it's so nice that you can, like for me with my children, I felt guilty a lot because I worked a lot when they were younger, mainly because my business takes a lot of effort and energy, and it is also very hands-on. And 
I just couldn't always get it done in a day. Uh And then each one of them, however, has either worked in the business, been in it, been involved in it in some way, even if it was observing what I was doing. And all of them over time have said, mom, I'm so proud of you. And I'm so happy that you showed us work ethic And versus like in my brain, I'm like, oh, my God, am I being neglectful? Oh, my gosh, am I doing everything I can possibly do? And, you know, in the end, I was I just wouldn't accept it necessarily until I got validation from them that watching a mom work teaches values in a way that you can't just spit out at them. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. They see it. And I'm sure that your children are proud of you. It's it's a huge accomplishment. So hats off and clap, clap. (laughs) I'm looking at your beautiful background behind you and you have a gorgeous wooden beaded chandelier and a beautiful Uh, It looks like piece of art on one of the walls. And so obviously when you create products for the home, beauty is important to you. looks like you like to be surrounded by beautiful things and things that function. So why is beauty important, Corey? You know what? I think anything aesthetically pleasing and calming for me and my own personal home. In this house, I tried to make it comfortable clean cleanliness is a big thing for me you know I have the white counters and the I just like everything to to be comfortable for a limousine that design is just it's just a very basic I didn't want anything to stand out too much just kind of blends in nicely you know to any home with Blade Butler I just like everything to be clean it's important to me that when people come in my home they feel that you know I I hope that I have accomplished that for other people too and made it easier. So yeah, sure. <laughs> So, what is your obviously scent and fe- how a home feels or is important to you? So what's your favorite scent? So my favorite scent, interesting enough, is, is a eucalyptus based scent. I think it feels, um, you know, calming and fresh. It kind of gives you a, a fresh, a breath of fresh air. But my daughter, a few years back, my oldest had to have a spinal tap. And when she did, she came home and I happened to have that scent in the house. And so it makes her feel very queasy. So I can no longer oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, have that scent. Every once in a while, I try to sneak one in and she's like, nope, <laughs> not doing I it. it. <laughs> So now I think we lean towards a lot of like lavenders in the kitchen. I like lemon. So I kind of just buy whatever I'm, I'm feeling, you know, all around the holidays, it's always cinnamon apple, you know, makes you feel right. warm and fuzzy. So now I just buy kind of whatever I'm feeling that day. I mean, what is so great is you can because yeah. it will all work. <laughs> <laughs> it will all work. I take the kids and they buy whichever brand, whatever scent they want and put them in their rooms and they're all unique, you know? So what well, the oh, this room is super perfumey and girly. So yeah. So how often do you use your blade butler? Is this a constant thing or I use it now that, you know, it's, it's, they're clean. They're super clean, obviously, you know, I'll send the kids out and I'll be like, clean the fans and they run and (laughs) grab it because it only takes just a matter of minutes. So I use it probably one or two times a month, just as I normally dust and clean my house. I grab it, clean the blades and wash it and then put it away. So I think once you tackle the chore, because it is kind of a mind over matter thing with ceiling fans, you know, it's like, Ah, just keep them on. Then we don't have to look at the dust. (laughs) But once you get them clean, it's super easy, fast and simple, honestly. Yeah. What does the future hold? Do you have some more ideas up your sleeve? You know what? I do have a little bit of uh, things kind of rocking around in there, but I think for right now, I need to just hone in, focus on these. We have some exciting avenues that we're kind of looking at with them. We'll be on Amazon. We just got all of that process approved. So that's it's quite the feat getting on there, but we'll be on there. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we'll be up running and have everything live. So I'm not sure. I just, I'm liking the path that we're on. Everything is positive. Our whole team of people are amazing. We work well together and 
I, I'm not sure, but I'm excited. I mean, I think it's. I'm excited for you. I mean, I, I love an idea and I love to figure out things like how do you market it? How do you distribute it? How do you get it from here to here? In fact, mm-hmm. I'm also an artist and my daughter said, and I started selling my art pretty intensively. And my daughter said, mom, why do you do this? She should be kicking back and like, just like enjoying time away from business stuff. And I'm like, have you met me? (laughs) I'm not going to kick back. This is what I do. I have to figure out how to get it to market, how to make it work, how to process it, all those things. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to be for sure keeping my eye on you because I am pulling for you girls. I think this is an incredible, incredible product. And both of you. And I, and I see so many like needs for it. And I, I will throw in that I often have clients say to me, they're not wired to have a chandelier come down so that you can clean it. But wow. Like if you could figure out a way to clean chandeliers, I get it all the time. And I think that there's some merit there because you got to get up on a ladder. It's a pain. It's similar to your ceiling fan situation. Mm-hmm. And again, not everyone can afford or has their house wired. If they have a really tall ceiling, they don't have a way to get that chandelier down. Some people have cranks for them. And if we're building a house with somebody with tall, tall ceilings, we'll have a motor installed so that the, wow. the chandelier can go up and down. But again, that is not for the average bear. The <laughs> average bear wants their chandelier cleaned and the, and they can't get it done. And mm-hmm. so in any, I'm just putting that little bug in your ear. Interesting. And, you know, it's like, if you come up with something, I want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, that is interesting. And what I hear from the commercial side of it and um, cleaning companies and things like that is it's such a liability to have their employees up on these ladders and step stools, reaching out, trying to clean these things if they, they oh, slip okay. and fall and, you know, and everything else. So there's, there's that element to it too. Sure. Huh. sure. So anyway, I already see your wheels turning. <laughs> <laughs> I see it happening. You were born an inventor. <laughs> you know what? It's just, it, it keeps me going. It's, it's like you, it's constant movement and progression uh, and just, let's see. It's exciting. It's fun. It's brain for sure. So I have a signature question sure. that I love to ask. And it's if you had a hashtag that really explained your legacy, what would it be? Oh gosh. Hashtag make life easier. (laughs) Perfect. You know, I always throw people off with that question, not intentionally. It's a hard question. Yeah. I think I would answer it probably different every day, but, but I love what you said because that, that is what you're standing for and you are doing it. And I think it's, you know, it's obviously important to you and it's important to the world because if you can live easier, then you can in the end live more beautifully. And I think that the two go hand in hand. Yeah. I think so, so as we wrap up today, tell us, I know you're going to be on Amazon but mm-hmm. are there other avenues or how do people buy your products? Where do, where do they go? So right now um, it's bladebutler.com. You can buy it straight off the website and then alimacent.com. So just both websites is where they currently are. And then, like I said, look for us on Amazon. We should be there anytime. So I'm just so excited for you guys. And I'm so excited for this product. And I know my listeners are going to want to take advantage of this. Like what a dream, two dream products for your home that will make life easier. So Corey, thank you so much for being with me today and sharing all about these products. I really appreciate you. I appreciate what you and your partner are doing and what you're accomplishing. And so I say to the listener, check them out and don't forget to take a look on Amazon coming up and go to the websites, read all about this because this really is unique and wonderful. And you know what I like to say today 
is a great day to decorate. I'll see you next week, everyone. Thank you for getting me to the 52 mark. I appreciate it. Love you. And bye for now. Bye. Thanks for listening to Decorate Like a Design Boss. If you want more info on how to decorate your space like a pro, visit KimberlyGriggDesigns.com. See you next week.